Okay, I'm, I'm very sorry because my my laptop is not working, so I'm using my phone to do this Zoom call. It's not like exactly very easy. Um, so at any point of time, I can't read the chat. If you need, just uh, express yourself directly to me. Um, maybe just to warm everybody up, um, to share with you a little bit of what I do and why I do um, the work that um, that started off. I have my diary here today. This, this diary is uh, where I, I got it when it was one of the point of time when I started to realize the importance of what I eat uh, impacts my life. And uh, it made the turning point for me to even start my, my career uh, running this uh, business in the coffee. And uh, maybe after the, the, the sharing a little bit, we have the, the dialogue going on. So um, three very uh, un unusual things about me. Um, when I was young, I, I always have, since I'm at home, I, I get all my props with me. I don't have PowerPoint stuff now. Um, I, I used, I, had, I collect garbage, toy garbage trucks. Right, uh, it was a key, a habit. Uh, I, I, I love garbage trucks when I was young. I think nowadays more kids are actually doing that more. And um, the, the recycling drive over the years I've seen, right, it, it very evolved the type of trucks that are coming up in toys, which to me is very exciting because as you see what kids are being influenced by through toys, um, my son in particular, right, they start to be more aware about what's happening along with the waste that's, that, that's going along them. Uh, in, in the early days when I was, when I, I started collecting, everybody think I'm crazy. Even my mom would tell me, why are you looking at cabbage trucks every single day? Um, it was one of the things that got me into the social realm also. When I, I went in, uh, my, one of my bosses was asking me, you know, why, why do you collect this? Uh, why, why such a, a weird hobby? I never heard of anybody doing that before. But it, it was a thing that because of that, it sparked me to be a little bit more aware of the un, unaware than uh, that, that started on the community building track. So um, maybe to focus back on topic, into the magic diary. Um, this, this, this book was given to me when I was first hospitalized, I think about four or five years back, not five, five years back actually. Um, my wife gave me this diary. I was actually in the hospital for two weeks. It's my, me with my son. Now, Keegan, um, back then was only about three, two or three years old. So he, he can't really speak then when I was in the hospital, it was because of a cardiomyopathy. And uh, I, I started to learn that actually one in four people actually have this problem with their um, heart. And um, the, the doctor was telling me that it's largely due to your, um, your daily lifestyle stress and it's one of the main factors. Uh, it comes with age when you pass 30, uh, it starts to wrap up. And then when I was in the hospital for that two weeks, I, I, I see frequent flyers rotating out of my hospital bed. And as I, I'm always in the community development work, right? Even when I'm on the bed, I try to chit chat with the people next door. I try to walk out of my ward to talk to the people next door. Of course, now with COVID, we can't do that. Um, I try to connect with people and I try to understand what they've been doing in their lifestyle. And, and then I start, it dawned upon me to realize that um, it, it's actually largely to do with your lifestyle, right? The, the, you know, the things that you eat on the day to day. Um, and one of the main factors that came in was coffee because coffee is actually a trigger, caffeine. Um, and then locally, our coffee is uh, kopi. It's very bitter. Uh, if it's not done properly. And now with uh, people adding in corn, green beans, many different kinds of ingredients in just to, to, to bulk up the weight, right? It starts to create a need to add more sugar, to sweeten the drink, milk, to, 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 to add to the flavor of the, the drink. And then you realize that actually everyone is drinking sugar, condensed milk. Uh, it's not helping. And then um, I, I think it's, it became very important to me that um, to, to start the coffee business. Now, the, the first inspiration that came to me um, when I was running the, the, the coffee business was to model after Lee. This uh, 
big shot coffee that you all see the logo, the man, he's not me. It's actually the guy I last arrested when I was a police officer. So shortly before I actually shipped my, my job to the social sector, I was a cop doing community work. I went around the neighbors to make friends. Um, surprisingly, Lee is actually the, I don't know anybody heard about Along San. The Lance is a, he's a, was a very legendary loan shark in the old days. Um, it's like a Robin Hood of your Singapore times in the 80s. So they, he bribed a lot of police officers. Um, there was a mass crackdown. Um, Lee was actually one of the one of his henchmen, his closest henchmen with him. And um, as I was, as I brought him in, I, I learned that it was one of his. Um, he was actually selling contraband cigarettes. Um, in my entire town, he was the peddler, but he, he runs on a bicycle around. And along with it, he. he he used to be a heroin addict. So I actually borrowed his business model. Uh, when he go around, he actually used the letterbox to slot in the contraband cigarettes to store it as storage. He didn't have, uh, uh, we, we can never find his, um, all his, his, his loot. He would actually keep the items all in the, the letterbox and the dry risers. So when I started the business, I wanted to get coffee to people. Um, the, the traditional Hainanese coffee. Uh, we packed, I packed it in small little sachets, drip back style, and then we I, I toasted to people in the letterbox. So similarly, um, that, that model worked because why it, it reached the customers, it was very relational based. And it was because of relationship that actually it built the business from the start uh, before I actually started off the cafe. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, that, that's how it, it led, one thing led to another. And uh, now, now we actually moved on uh, to have our cafe at, at Pearl Hill. Yeah. Now, running, running an FMB is uh, not, not easy, it's no joke. Every day, uh, I think some of you have seen, seen me there. Um, it, it's really a lot of effort. Um, now, I, I started to, I, I always had this problem growing things. I, my, I kill every plant that I touch, right? Then um, it, when I and when I was at when I was at Pearl Hill, um, I, I'm actually making satay with the, the legendary Gyeongbao satay hunter. Now he teaches me how to make satay, but more than that, um, what what he does is he gets me to do an it's like an apprenticeship. Yeah, I have to go to the garden. I have to plant things. I have to plant the pineapples that we use. And um, now in the earlier days, I, 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 I was very afraid because, you know, anything that I put in the soil dies, right? Um, over time, the, for the past, I think about six months, yeah, miraculously, miraculously everything in the backyard is still alive, right? Um, that, that patience that it, it, it trains, I think somehow, Leads also to my the craft, the 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 the, the skewering of the satay. It helps because the gardening is you know a little bit like your Mr Miyagi from your karate kid times. If some of you are familiar, we have to always um, practice, and and it's the fingers okay. right that helps us to do get work done. Um, the value of understanding the importance of my ingredients. The, the different textures of the pineapple, not every pineapple is the same, right? Not every, um, every meat that comes to the table is the same. How do you maximize your value? And uh, Uncle Apui, they will call him, always tells me the story about how he started the business with just $10, right? Just $10. So that mindset as an entrepreneur, right? Um, to, to even the satay sticks, back then they had to actually use the leaves, they, was, they would dry the leaves and they would skewer off the, the leaves and use the, the stem of the leaf to make the satay stick, right? He told me that if you want to go back then to that kind of times, uh, it's going to be very different, but you can't, you, you have to understand even right down to the stick. And yes, when you are using it over the grill, how fast does it burn, right? Um, and you start to understand the characteristics of how important every single thing that comes in play that's made, made and now how many things that are made for us right now to even bags to hold the sati, right? Um, so 
yeah, that, that's kind of my, my journey so far that I've spent. Um, so maybe I shouldn't talk so much. We can have, have a, maybe a more, more dialogue and hear more from you guys. Uh, so yes, yeah, so please uh, fire away. <laughs> So uh, I think it's a very interesting sharing. Thank you, Benjamin. Yeah. So can, can I uh, maybe uh, find out more about, you know, uh, why, why are you learning sate from, you know, from him, you know, while you're doing the coffee thing? I cannot oh, see okay. the So, so my, my business in, in since um, when I started Big Shaw Coffee, that was just one of the first stepping stones as a brand. The idea of what I do always is to try to with the team right, that I grow, we are trying to always preserve the heritage of what was done in the past. So um, the, the Chinese, we have a, our mission and motto and our vision is actually in Mandarin, is uh, which means when you innovate, right, don't, um, usually there is, we always think, you know, when, ha, maybe let's discard the old ways of doing things. It can we can accelerate with new technology, but the first technology that's the most important is actually the the human effect, right? Which is usually neglected. Um, IBM, Apple didn't grow to its size uh, without the innovation of their organization chart, you know, how the people structure and they work. Um, it actually started with people first, right? Um, when if I I go back to the then the the when Chuang Xing Pu Wang Pen. Sometimes at the youngsters, we, we think, hey, you know, let's, let's, not, let's, let's discard the, like, like, when I started off, I thought I could use an electric wheel for the satay, for example. Um, Uncle Apui didn't stop me. He told me, go ahead, you know. Wow, this is a good idea. <laughs> right. As a master facilitator, he let you go through the school of hard knocks. And you start to realize, right, that actually an electric wheel has a lot of its pitfalls. Why? Um, Firstly, the, the, the way it cooks, the characteristics, the aroma. Um, people don't recognize it as a grill. People recognize the chaku as a grill, right? These are little anthropological stuff that you don't realize you know, until you are in it. And, um, and as I was learning with him, right? To me, this, this journey is what was valuable was that uh, it's not transformational just for myself. Um, it's transformational. It is, it's an education route that goes two ways. Um, sometimes I'm the teacher, sometimes he's the teacher. We, 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 we exchange our roles very frequently. And I think that, that helps us to both grow. Now, if we even go to the... He, he, when I'm, I'm doing this, um, sometimes when I'm doing Zoom calls or I'm doing uh, on the website, right? He will come to me and I'll say, you know, oh, this photo doesn't really work out. And then he starts to teach some ideas on what he, he, he feels will help with sales. Because, you know, he's seen it from the hawker days, right, when you have nothing. That's a wooden cut. Right? Uh, that's, that was everything. Yeah. Uh, he understand the basic of business. Yeah. So, to, to me, that was, that was a critical. And that's why I always think it's important to preserve the, 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 the knowledge, the institutional knowledge, so that other people also learn through it. Uh, it's never about the food. End of the day, it's never about the food. It's never about the coffee. 